and the book of Proverbs. Go to the book of Psalms, chapter 27, and the book of Proverbs, chapter 4. Yesterday, I was about to uh, put together a, a sermon on grace. And I sat at my desk, and I began to put together a sermon on grace, and I got about three hours into it, and the Holy Spirit says, nah. And let me just tell you what he told me, and my hands froze on the computer screen. He said these words to me. He said, I want you to gaze vertically and glance horizontally. Say, gaze, gaze. Vertically. vertically, glance, glance. Horizontally. horizontally. On an airplane, they have what they call a vertical stabilizer. And it's the tail stabilizer that goes up, way up in the air. And the wings are considered what they call horizontal stabilizers. The vertical stabilizer is extremely important because it actually steers the airplane. The horizontal stabilizers actually keep the airplane in the air. So last night, the Lord said to me, after I spent three hours studying on grace, he said, make sure your gaze is vertical. Make sure your gaze is vertical at me and your glance is horizontal. So say these words after me. Say, my gaze gaze should be vertical. vertical. My glance should be horizontal. Now, I want you to consider for just a moment what your eyes focus on day in and day out. And generally speaking, we fix our eyes on circumstances. We, we fix our eyes on shortcomings in people. We, we fix our eyes on people's flaws. We even fix our eyes on people's outward beauty. My father used to always tell me, don't be so deceived by the pretty woman until you find that their beauty is within. We fix our eyes at the outward when we should be fixing our eyes at the inward. Now, say those words after me again. My gaze gaze should be vertical My glance should be horizontal. Now, horizontal glancing should be on circumstances like your grandchildren, your children, your finances, your problems, your troubles, your situations. And though these horizontal circumstances are factual, they should be not what our gaze is upon. Amen? Amen. I said they should not be what our gaze is upon. Now take a look at Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25. I want to teach you something about vertical and horizontal faith. In Proverbs chapter 4, verse 25, let's read verse 25 together. This is King James. It says, come on, read it. One, two, three. Let thine eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before me. Read it one more time out loud on the count of three. One, two, three. Let thy eyes look right on and let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Solomon says, let my eyes be fixed vertically. Let my eyes be fixed vertically. Let my eyes be fixed on God and don't let them wander off. Let them look straight before thee. Keep these eyes from looking horizontally. Keep these eyes fixed on you vertically. Can you understand what I'm saying? Now, I want you to lock something in your mind this morning for me, please. Because when you leave this church, there's always something that the preacher says that you sticks with you. Amen? Amen. When you're faced with trials and situations and circumstances, and we all are, I want you to keep your mind fixed on this. Lord, let my eyes be fixed on you vertically. And let me glance on my circumstances horizontally. 
Don't be so fixed on your circumstances. Be fixed on God. Amen. Amen. He says, let thy eyes look right on. And let thy eyelids look straight before thee. Neither should I look to the left or neither should I look to the right. And you shouldn't look to the left or to the right. Your eyes and your fix should be gazed upon him and only him at all times. Put your hands to heaven and say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Come on, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Let my eyes look right on. Let my eyelids, eyelids look straight ahead. Amen. Amen. Let my eyes not be distracted from you. Keep my eyes upon Jesus. Amen. That's called vertical faith. Say vertical. vertical. Faith. faith. Vertical is up. Horizontal is side to side. Let my gaze be vertical. Let me not turn to the left or to the right. This is what I mean. We should not be people focused. We should be God focused. I don't know if you heard that. For many of us in this room, our focus is on life. For most of us, we focus on circumstances and, and problems, and our life focus is horizontal. What he did, what she did. I need this and I need that. He says, let my eyes look straight on. Even my eyelids, let them look straight ahead. Amen. Boy, if we could only do that. Amen? Amen? Now look at me. Vertical worship gives us perspective on horizontal warfare. I said vertical worship gives us a greater perspective on horizontal warfare. Amen? Amen? Amen. I want to tell you a true story about a woman named Virginia. It's a true story about a woman named Virginia. When she was a child, she lost her eyesight. In fact, when she goes to church and she goes to bookstores and to the library, she gets all of her resources on audio tape. And when she comes to church, she does not bring her Bible because she cannot see her Bible. But at prayer, Virginia can always be heard asking for this one thing. God, keep my eyes fixed upon you. Now, she doesn't have eyes to see. She has no eyes to see. And her prayer always in that prayer meeting is always, Lord, let me keep my eyes fixed on you. Now, keeping in mind that she has no eyes to see. She can't even read a Bible. And her prayer is, Lord, let my eyes be fixed on thee. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Sing with me. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. Interesting, when this woman, Virginia, prays to God, she says, Lord, let my eyes be fixed on you and you alone. She wants her eyes to be fixed on God. Look at Psalms chapter 148, verse 8. In Psalms 148 and verse 8, he says, But my eyes are unto, unto thee, O God, the Lord, and thee is my trust. Leave not my soul destitute. My eyes are unto thee, O God, my Lord, and thee is my trust. 
Leave not my soul destitute. Now, now stay with me, please. Stay with me. We must keep our gaze on God vertically. There is no doubt that these passages suggest that we keep, look at me, that we keep our eyes on Jesus. It's not the horizontal troubles that we see right in front of us that we should be fixed on. Our gaze should always be on God. Amen, amen. I said our gaze, our gaze is different than our glance. If your gaze is on your circumstances, change it. I said if your gaze, okay, this is the gaze. You get it? This is the glance. Our gaze should be on God. From whence our help comes from. Come on, look at me. Look at me. And this should be our glance on our circumstances. Did you get that? Did you get that? Can you do that with me? Come on. Let's give our gaze to God. Come on. Now, now, as you're gazing on God, I want you to think of a circumstance you're facing right now. Come on, just think of it real quick. And, and just give that circumstance just a little glance. Go ahead. I keep my eyes upon the hills from whence my help comes from. Oh, if you could only get this. Oh, if you could only get this deep down in your soul, you wouldn't even need eyeballs. Your gaze, your gaze, your gaze, your gaze should always be on Jesus Christ who sits at the right hand of the Father. Although Virginia has lost most of her sight horizontally, she gained more sight than most people vertically. Look at me. She stopped living her life horizontally because she could no longer gaze at her circumstances horizontally. In fact, she ended up marrying a doctor, a very rich, good-looking, handsome doctor because she read his heart and not his eyes. Amen. Her eyes read his heart and she ended up marrying a very wealthy doctor one day and never ever looked into his eyes, but was able to read his heart because God said, this is the man that I want you to marry. Wow. You see, today, we, we, we place a great sense of, of importance on our gazing at beautiful women, men, don't we? But beauty is skin deep amen. and dumb is forever. Amen? <laughs> I didn't make that up. Judge Judy made that up. <laughs> I'm just clarifying that. <laughs> Men that marry women because of their external beauty, you are looking at that woman, sir, horizontally. Or women that marry men because of their good looks and they fail to see deep inside their heart. Do you want to know if a man or woman loves God? Take a look at what they gaze upon. What do they do? What do they love about life? Amen. Keep your eyes fixed upon God. And don't ever love anyone that doesn't have the same intense gaze upon God as you or you'll turn into becoming someone just like them. Keep your gaze vertically and keep your glance horizontally. Can I hear a big fat amen? amen. How about one more? Amen. 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 As Christians, we are called to represent and reflect. Hello? We are called as Christians to represent and reflect the light of Christ. 
You don't even have to open up your big fat mouth and quote off those great scriptures that you all know so very well. If you're going to say God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, you better make sure that your life reflects that or your words are meaningless. You say you love God, let me see the things that you love. Let me see the things that you love and I'll tell you if you love God. Keep your eyes fixed. Make your gaze be upon Almighty God. And when the circumstances of try to distract you, just give it a glance and keep your eyes fixed on God. Amen. Can I hear an amen? amen? Now, I would have much rather preached the message of grace because I really had that one down really, really well yesterday. <laughs> The word represent means re-present. Hello? The word represent means I will re-present something that's been presented to me. If you say, I am here and I represent Christ, then you are representing the master. Amen. Now, if your life does not represent the master, it represents something else. Want to know why? Because that's what your gaze is upon. If your gaze is upon television and all that junk on TV, that's what you re-present. Junk. We must, we must, we must, we must reflect what we gaze upon. Did you know that God cannot, cannot work through us what he hasn't worked in us? I don't know if you heard that. I said, God cannot work through you what he has not worked in you. If our life hasn't been vertical enough, if our life has not been God-focused, we can only give to others what is inside of us. I said, if your life is not God-focused, all you can give to others is the things that you have gazed upon. Keep your gaze upon God. Amen. If you ever met somebody and you said, how you doing? Well, let me just tell you. <laughs> Do you have a minute? Oh. Have you noticed how high taxes are getting around here? Have you, have you, did you get the recent electric, the electric bills going up so high? Yeah, I can't stand my boss. He's just, when somebody is God focused vertically and you say, how you doing? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. No evil shall befall thee, nor any plague shall come nigh thy dwelling, for he has given angels charge. Wait a minute, wait, I, I just asked you how you were. I just asked you how you were. Greater is he in me than he that's in this world. No weapon formed against me shall ever prosper. Okay, brother. Okay, brother. I can tell you one thing, that that man's life is vertical. It is God-focused, gazing upon the goodness of God and the promises of God. Jesus said, from the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Can I hear another big fat hallelujah? Hallelujah. Say, when my life is vertical and God-focused, I can give to others what I've gazed upon. Now, I want to show you something. I studied this for hours and hours and hours last night. I've never seen this in the Word before. I said, Lord, I need you to show me about vertical and horizontal worship. He said, go to Psalms 27. So, so hop over there to Psalms 27. Amen? Amen? Oh, this is glorious. I'm never going to forget this. So let me just show you, let me just show you the vertical and horizontal principle. Amen? Amen. Now, now, before you read this, before you get all into reading this and getting ahead of me, I want to teach you about the vertical and horizontal purpose. And once you learn this, you can see this scattered throughout the Bible, especially through the book of Psalms. You'll see the vertical and horizontal principle throughout this psalm. 
It's glorious. In fact, in fact, you can, you can discover more about God with your eyes closed than you can with them opened. Now look at Psalms 27 and verse number 1. Now I'm going to show you here the vertical, the vertical praise that David gives forth to God. Then I'll show you the horizontal. Watch this. Now don't miss this because this is the key to success in Christ. Amen? The Lord is my... And my, now this is verse 1. He opens up this psalm vertically. The Lord is my, he is my, wow. Now, did he have a lot of problems? Tons of problems. He said, the Lord is my light. That's vertical. The Lord is my salvation. Vertical. Who shall I fear? No one. He just glances at fear. No one. Because my eyes are fixed upon the hills from whence my help comes from. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Do you see the vertical praise? Do you see the vertical recognition? Come on, read it out loud with me. One, two, three. The Lord is my and my of whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my of whom shall I be afraid? Verse 2. When the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come against me to eat up my flesh, they... Verse 1, Michael, because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Yes. The Lord is my Savior. The Lord is my Redeemer. The Lord is my Healer. The Lord is my El Shaddai. My Lord is my Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my Jehovah Rapha. The Lord is my Jehovah Nitsu. Why shall I be afraid? So I want you to do this for me. Come on. Get your eyes vertical on God. Come on. Make your gaze be upon God. He is the light of my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? And I'll just give a quick glance to your circumstances. The Lord is the light. The Lord is my Savior. He is my King, my Healer, my Redeemer, my El Shaddai. Of whom shall I fear? Do you see that, church? Verse 2 again. And when the wicked, and when the wicked, and they will come, and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Verse 3. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this will I be confident. Verse 1, Michael. Vertical. Because the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Amen. He opens up with verse 1 and vertical recognition of God. For he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God. Come on, vertical. For he who dwells. You're seeing it? For he who dwells in this vertical secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge. He is my strength. He is my fortress, my God in whom I shall trust. So Michael, Psalms 91. Let's take a look at vertical and horizontal. Psalms 91 verse 1. He that dwells in the... Wait a minute. He's talking about dwellers, not visitors. I said he's talking about dwellers, not visitors. He who... In the... Of the... Shall... Under the... Of the... Verse 2... I will say, come on, of the Lord. He is my, my. Verse 3. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the follower and from the noisome pestilence. Michael, verse 1, because he who dwells in the, that's vertical secret place of the Most High God. Amen. 
Isn't this glorious? Hallelujah. You know, many of the Psalms are recorded by David with great wrestling with God. He wrestled with God over problems and adversities and afflictions and everything. Everything he wrestled with God. And although we may not have human enemies such as David had that are seeking our lives. Have you ever had anybody seeking to kill you before? Yes. Hello? <laughs> I know you have. She really has. But although people in this room have never had somebody literally seeking your life like David had... As long as we keep our gaze vertical, the psalm says, as long as we abide under the shadow of the Almighty, verse 2, I will say of the Lord that he is my refuge, he is my strength and my fortress, my God in whom I shall trust. Amen. 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 Now look at, look at me, look at me. Now I want you to give me your human eyeballs, amen? amen? We are not immune to troubles or trials. We are not immune to discouragements or loss of friends or jobs or loved ones, amen? What resources can we lay hold of so that we can overwhelmingly conquer these horizontal circumstances? Horizontal circumstances circumstances as your job, your money, your problems, your temptations, your afflictions, your trials, your tribulations. Those are horizontal. Those are the things nagging at you to keep your gaze upon. There are people in your life that will remind you if you forget of how much a mess your life is. So if you ever forget how messed up your life was and how messed up your life is, just hang around people that glance at God. And they'll remind you. You don't even have to pay them. They'll make sure that you never forget how messed up your life is and make sure that your gaze is horizontal just like theirs. But if you really, really, really want to know how much somebody loves God, take a look at the things that they love. Did you hear what I said? If you really, really want to know how much a man really, really, really loves God, take a look at his toys. Take a look at the things that occupy his or her time. Take a listen to what that person says. Amen. 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 Keep your gaze. Finish the sentence. Keep your gaze and your glance. Amen. Amen. Now, some people have their gaze on the grandchildren, on the finances, on the problems, on the marriage, on my health. But he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Are you getting this? Now, 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 that doesn't mean that you even have to have eyeballs. You can be blind. Like Virginia. You can have no physical gift of eyesight. How many of you prayed that before? Lord Jesus, by your spirit, fix my eyes and my eyelids upon thee. Amen. Amen. David's greatest resource can be found in every single one of the Psalms if you study his vertical praise and his horizontal glances. I only got through a few of these last night. I was so excited that I didn't hardly want to go to bed. He learned how to view every horizontal circumstance in the light of his vertical praise. As long as my praise is vertical, my circumstances are conquered. You read them. Go through them today. Study every one of them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jump back to Psalms 27. I want to show you some more. 
This, this vertical and horizontal praise principle is so encapsulated in Psalms 27 that it's fascinating in which the psalmist continually, look at me, continually shifts his focus between heaven and earth. Between heaven and earth. He shifts his focus from horizontal praise and horizontal gaze to vertical horizontal glances. Now look at Psalms 27 and verse number 3. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this I will be He said, because the Lord is my light. The Lord is my light. In verse 1, the Lord is my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? Whom shall I be afraid? Look at verse 4. Here we go again with vertical praise, vertical gazing. One thing I have desired of the Lord, read it with me, that I will seek after, come on, that I may all, all the days of my life to behold the now here in verse number 5, he, he, he adjusts his vertical praise now to horizontal. Take a look at verse number 5. For in the time of trouble, that's horizontal, in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his... Are you seeing this? Are you as excited as I am? In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me, and he shall set me upon a... Verse 6, and now shall my head be. Come on, come on, come on. And now shall my head be. Oh, there we go again to vertical. And now shall my head be lifted up. My enemies around about me, therefore I will offer in his tabernacles. What? Praise and worship. Are you getting this? I will offer in the tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Amen. I am to keep my gaze and keep my blank glance. Put your hands together and say, I will keep my And my yes. Oh, I did good. I shall keep my eyes upon the hills. You are shaped. Hear me now. You are shaped. By what you love. Amen. If you want to know what a person is like, just find out what they love. You know who taught me that little principle? My dad. My dad used to say, don't listen to everything everybody tells you. Just take a look at the things that they love. My dad was smart. So although the world looks with their two eyeballs and looks at people and listens to every word they say in the physical, don't. Look at what they love. And listen to what they don't say. Did you hear what I said? Listen to what they don't say. Have you ever been around somebody before that doesn't talk about God? Oh. Ever been around that before? Don't listen to what people say. Listen to what they don't say. Keep your eyes gazed at God and keep your glances at the horizontal. Now, this is difficult for somebody who can see with these eyes. Virginia had it very easy. She was blind. She had a greater gift than you. 
She was entirely dependent upon God to lead her heart. I'm not saying that being blind is a great thing. But I believe it is an advantage. Amen. Imagine going through life saying, God, let me see in my heart the man you've called me to marry. And she marries not only the man of her life, the man of her dreams, but she lands the bachelor of the year. <laughs> Verse 7 of Psalms chapter 27. Oh Lord, he's going vertical again. Come on, come on, come on, read it with me. Hear, O oh Lord, vertically when I cry with my voice, have mercy upon me and when thou saidest in verse 8, he's vertical again, when thou saidest, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Verse 9, he's going vertical again. He's saying, hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. Now he's going to go horizontal in verse 10. Are you awake? Yes. He said, when my father and my mother forsake me. Now he's going vertical. I mean horizontal. He first goes vertical and expresses his deep need for God. And then he takes a little bit of a glance horizontally. And he says, when my mommy and my daddy forsook me, then the Lord will take me up. He just did a little glance there. Verse 11. He goes vertical again. He just takes a glance there in verse number 10. But now he says, teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of my enemies. Verse 12. Deliver me not unto the will of my enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. Anybody been there before? I said, anybody been there before when people have breathed out cruelty upon your life? Just take a glance at it. Verse number 13, I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Verse 14. Wait a minute. He goes vertical again. Come on, come on. Wait. Come on, come on. Wait upon the Lord. Be of good courage. And he shall strengthen thy heart. Wait, I say, David not only worships by seeking God's face. Look at me. As a matter of fact, close your eyes. David not only worships by seeking God's face, as Virginia did. David also seeks God's ways from deep within their hearts. He asked God to teach him, to lead him, and to protect him from treachery. Keep your eyes closed. Now I want you to keep your trust right now in God vertically. Come what may, you need not despair horizontally. Wait upon the Lord. Be strong. And let your heart right now take courage. Wait upon the Lord. Instead of frantically seeking to rectify your circumstances, is your heart listening to me this morning? I said, instead of letting your heart frantically seeking to rectify your circumstances horizontally, I want you to wait for God's timing, God's power, God's method, and seek Him vertically. 
So put your hands to heaven with me right now and I will conclude. conclude. Would you do this with me, please, all of you? Say, Holy Spirit, I am asking you that my gaze be vertical and that my glance be horizontal. In the name of Jesus. Say it again. I'm asking you, Holy Spirit, that my gaze be vertical and my glance be horizontal. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a big shout. Stand on your feet.